All right. Thank you again for joining and joining in on Big B Sports Talk. Uh, we got a special guest today talking Minnesota football, Minnesota Vikings football. Mr. Steggy is joining us. We're talking all things Vikings football today. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Let's talk about it. So, Steggy, thanks for joining us, man. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, Brian. I'm doing all right. Outside of the technical difficulties we had to begin the show, I think it's going to be a great one. Uh, probably, uh, I'm going to guess it's going to go a little bit better than that Vikings-Packer game that we had on Sunday. Yeah, that was that, that was bad. That, that was an ugly one, man. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it kind of dives into it a little bit. The Vikings season as a whole... You know, a lot of it has been the Vikings winning a lot of close games, uh, you know, one possession games, uh, which is basically the opposite of what happened last year when they lost all those games. So tell me as a whole how you are feeling about Vikings football right now. You know, it's a uh, it's a mix of emotions. You know, after the, the Vikings loss on Sunday to Green Bay, obviously our big divisional rival um there doesn't you know there does there isn't a bigger rival i should say than the than the green bay packers for for the vikings uh, i said this on our post game podcast podcast uh the skull purple podcast by the way shameless plug um <laughs> that you know look if you would have asked me at the beginning of the year preseason where i thought the vikings would be my guess was somewhere between nine and eight and 11 and six that, okay. that was about where i would would have put the vikings and the fact that we're sitting here at 12 and four locked up the division weeks ago uh you can't you can't be sad i mean you can't be sad as a vikings fan uh i think if you're a realist you know is this team gonna go to the super bowl probably not you know it they're just the defense is in rough shape and i know we'll, we'll probably get into it a little more but uh, as far as my feelings, I would say I feel very grateful to have had as much fun as I've had so far this season, but uh, I'm starting to feel the disappointment creep in because I know it might not last too much longer. Right. You know, I mean, I picked the, the Vikings to win the division at the beginning of the year. I thought they were going to have a decent s season. My philosophy on that may have been a little warped. What I thought was, look, if they can't win it this year, Green Bay is going to be down. They're never going to be winning, and they got to blow up the whole thing and start over. <laughs> well, they won. You know, they, they won the division. And again, 12 and 4 at this point in the season, I don't even know that I saw that, but you know what? It, it's a great record. They've won 12 football games. You know, yeah. I don't know how many times a lot of franchises can say that they won 12 football games in a season. So good for them. Um, my problem, I, I guess I shouldn't say problem, but the issue with them is it's just the, the inconsistency against some of the good teams. I mean, minus the Buffalo debacle, which literally if Josh Allen learns how to take a snap from the inch line, that's a loss. <laughs> but they won the game, so you got to give them credit for that. But it's just like some of these things, you know, like this past week against Green Bay, and I don't even know how good Green Bay is, and then the Dallas loss. I mean, some of these games are just, you know, I don't know about them moving on in the playoffs – um, tell me what you think, because I don't see them being a real contender in the NFC, as painfully as that is to say, because I like the Vikings. I, I do. Even as a Steeler fan, I like the Vikings. I'm just not sure being inconsistent like this, that they can make a run, but I could be wrong. You tell me. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that you hit the nail on the head. It, it's really the inconsistency, and more than anything, defensively, they just can't hold up against a good NFL team. They, they can't. And that's right. why a team like Green Bay, even as bad as they have been at moments this year, a team like Dallas, when, when Dak isn't throwing a lot of interceptions, um, right. you know, those teams match up so well against the Vikings because the strength is that they can put up points, you know, they, and, sure. and certainly 
any Aaron Rodgers team, you know, now that he's starting to gel a little bit more with Christian Watson and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the run game has been great between Aaron Jones and, and, um, Corey, or not, not Corey Dillon, um, AJ Dillon. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a throwback Corey Dillon for you. <laughs> um, you know, it, so those types of teams, they match up well against the Vikings because the Vikings defense is about as strong as a paper napkin, or excuse me, a, a wet napkin, a paper napkin that is soaked in water. Um, it's just, it's hard to watch. They went on a stretch of uh, four games where they gave up 400 plus yards um, of offense for four games in a row. And I mean, you just, that's not winning right. football. And I, and I get that, you know, being a Vikings fan, we had the Zimmer defense for so long that was so strong up until the, you know, maybe last few years of his tenure. Um, I get that we are excited about having a more offensively focused team and scheme, mm -hmm. but uh, this is uh, this is a little ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, there's going to be some holes to fill. Uh, you know, the one thing that stinks is that they're not going to get a real high draft pick. So let's hope that the right. new GM can, uh, you know, cut his teeth on getting in some good defensive players uh, in the draft. And then hopefully there's some uh, capital out there in free agency. Well, and that was going to be my next thing. What do you think about moving forward? I, I think they, they've got some opportunities here. You know, uh, I know they're paying Cousins a ton of money. Um, do you see them... I guess they're not going to move off Cousins, obviously, next year. I mean, the guy, for whatever we want to think about him, he had an outstanding season this year. He did. Uh, and it's not over. I mean, by all means, the season is not over. I mean, you know, you've seen teams before catch lightning in a bottle and take that all the way to a Super Bowl victory. So I don't want to say that the Viking season is over because it's not, man. I mean, you know, and who knows? You get in a bunch of shootouts. They've won a bunch of close games. They can continue to win these close games who knows having yeah. said that in the future I, and, and you know i was talking to a buddy of mine earlier today and he was like you know we were just kind of going down the teams and going over the list and he said the vikings got to draft a quarterback at some point i it's obviously they're not going to draft a, a first round quarterback this year but at some point they got to start looking to get a new guy in there because it, it's because as good a season as cousins had this year it's kind of a ceiling and I don't know if his ceiling is Super Bowl ceiling. So yeah. tell me a little bit as far as what you think the, the future looks like, not only for the Vikings, but at the quarterback position for the Vikings. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Or, or if it was you or your buddy, if it was your buddy, then you got it right, buddy. <laughs> um, I, I think, you know, the Vikings do need to look to the future with the quarterback position relatively soon. Uh, we've already extended Cousins twice. Right. Um, and at this point, you, if, if they were to bring in a guy next year, now I am no NFL draft guru. I might even lean on you, Brian, a little bit once that time comes around. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, if they bring a guy in this year, he's going to have next year to sit behind Cousins and then an additional year. We've got Cousins right. for two more years. It's a fully guaranteed contract, so you're locked in. Uh, with right. cousins and I, you know, there might be a team out there that's willing to, uh, you know, uh, extend that. Cause look at the, I think as a Vikings fan, the allure of cousins is the, the stats, you know, that he puts Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And if you look at a team that might be good, actually a great example of this, look at the jets. I bet the jets think, man, if we could have a quarterback that could put up these numbers yes. with our defense, yes. what could we do? They would yes. pay up for a Kirk Cousins. And, uh, you know, when we brought Kirk Cousins in, unfortunately, he was just about a season or two too late because we had that kind of defense with Anthony Barr, Chad Greenway, yeah. uh, you know, guys that were just, we had a phenomenal defense. So the, you know, young Eric Kendricks, uh, Xavier Rhodes on the outside, yep. young Harrison Smith on the yep. back end. I mean, it was a staunch defense. And, um, Unfortunately, and I love Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy, Teddy's my guy. Um, he's, he seems like the nicest guy I've, I've ever seen on television. But right. I love Teddy, but look, if we're all being honest, Teddy's not Drew Brees. He's no. not, you know, uh, some of these, uh, he's not a, a Russell Wilson in his prime. No. Like, he's just not. No. And uh, so with a young Teddy, 
and that kind of offense that we were kind of like the Jets. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe there's a team out there that's willing to pay up. Uh, I just think the Vikings as an organization probably looks at this and goes, you know, if we bring in some young guy and it turns into garbage, mm -hmm. is that going to be good for the team? How are we going to, are we going to be still be putting butts and seats at the stadium? Right. Uh, you know, and it is a tough deal. And then you got a young coach too, where yeah. he doesn't want to look terrible early on because man, those first like three years for any new coach are so pivotal. You Huge. know, that's why Cleveland keeps going through coaches because they're just garbage every year. And then what happens is the organization gives up on them, you know? Correct. Well, especially coaches, because you get the stigma, you know, the first couple of years you can stink. And if you do, it's tough to go get another job. I know we have retreads and all that kind of stuff, but it's usually not after somebody's just, okay, they were three years and they were terrible. And then they go get another job. You know, exactly. it, it's not that way. So I absolutely understand. It's just, man. And I, again, I like the Vikings. I just, I don't know. It, it's just something, the timing, you're right, was off. Uh, but I still, I'm not giving up on the season with them yet. I'm just not. I, a, a team that has won this many close games, Steggy, I'm telling you, there's some fight in them, man. There's some <laughs> fight in them. You can't win that many close games and not have some fight in you. Yeah. Oh, I agree 100%. And I think it really just depends on the teams that they face. I know that's a little cliche, but it's true. You know, if we have to face the Niners, if we've got to face Dallas again, Boy, that's going to be tough. But if we, you know, if we've got to face the Giants again, I right. could see us be. I mean, the Giants are almost a perfect fit, a team that can't really play offense well. Oh, perfect. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, you know, it's, yeah, there's a lot of good teams in the playoffs. We're, we're bound to run into a buzzsaw at some point. Um, but you, like you said, anything can happen. You get hot at the right time, not to be a Debbie downer, but for any listeners that aren't really in tune with the Vikings world, a big blow to the Vikings is we lost our right tackle for the season in the, at a pro bowl right tackle, uh, in, in the green Bay game. And our starting center was out already. And then our second string center just went out for the season in the green Bay game. Yeah, and we just had to basically get a guy off the street to play center because we still don't know if our starting center is going to be back by playoff time. So 40% of the line is in shambles. Uh, I just think that's a, it's a tough recipe, man, heading into the playoffs. Ooh, man, brutal, yeah. brutal. Yeah. I mean, injuries are part of the game, but gee, even in Christmas, I mean, when you go 40% of your line gone, I mean, that's a problem. It just is. <laughs> Gee, even at Christmas. Yeah, Delvin Cook's probably looking at his at the line going, yeah. oh, boy, here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so moving on, now taking a look at the rest of the NFL, and I, we'll start in the NFC first. Uh, the playoffs for the playoff picture, a lot of it obviously is just about set. Um, the, the last spot is available. I'm guessing that you don't want to see Green Bay get that last spot just as a Vikings fan. Um, having said that, tell me what you think as far as the playoff picture, what it looks like, um, and, and take the, it, just for a second anyway, take the Minnesota glasses off. Tell me what you think about it and who you believe can or can't come out of the NFC. Yeah, man. Um... Well, to be very clear, I hope Green Bay loses every game. There you go. Every week. There you but, go. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is it is a fun playoff picture in the NFC. Obviously, you've got at the top the Eagles. Um, certainly, the storyline there is is Hurts going to be ready for the playoffs, which yeah. I think he is. I highly doubt that he will be um, that he's going to miss. Right. Uh, you know, I I think they've been careful with him for the sole purpose of making sure that he is ready for the playoffs. So I think it's still, in my opinion, the number one team in the NFC is the Eagles. Gotcha. Uh, then I would say it's, it's, it's the Niners. I were, I, 
I like the Niners. I think they're good. I don't. It doesn't even matter who's plays quarterback for them. I don't think Brock Purdy. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I think that they're they're going to be just fine. So I'm a little. I think they could make some noise. Mm-hmm. I think if Dallas can find consistency, uh, they're another team that if they get hot at the right time, they could make some noise. Okay. Um, but they just need to bring it every week. I mean, that's right. the, the the thing with Dallas. You know, and then from there, I mean, you got, I don't know, people want to jump on the, well, Tampa's, you know, Tampa's going to get in and, uh, you know, they're going to win that division. Look, Tampa is not a great team. No. They're just not. No. And, uh, you know, so they're not, they're not a great team. Not, uh, you know, not really too scared about them. I think they'll be out relatively early. Yep. Uh, And then I do think... I think the Lions uh, are going to come on in. I think it's going to be the Giants. And then I do think the Lions take down Green Bay, and I think they get in. And I'm going to be honest with you. If it's if the Vikings make an early exit, I might go buy a Lions jersey. I love the Lions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. See, my thing is, is that I like the Lions. I just don't know if they're going to go on the road and win. Oh, no, this, I don't think they're going to win. I just want to cheer for them. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. See, my thing is, I, I, I like the Lions. I think the Lions blew their chances two weeks ago by getting blown out. Um, I, I, I just think that, you know, they had their opportunity and they gave it up. And there, I don't think there's any chance they go to Green Bay and win that game. I've seen crazier things happen. I just don't believe that that's, that's something that, that will happen. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, if they get in, more power to them, man. More power to them. Uh, having said that, um, the the 49ers, I think, are the best team. Uh, but I think the Eagles will end up coming out. Here's the reason that I say that is because I know everybody's on the Brock Purdy bandwagon right now. They think, oh, he's the greatest thing since Joe Montana and this and that. And I'm like, look, I saw Brock Purdy for four years at Iowa State. I saw them be have r- a really good roster and still yeah. lose a ton of football games. Now, you can say some of that's coaching, um, and clearly Kyle Shanahan is a better coach than Matt Campbell, and it's San Francisco versus Iowa State. I just believe when push comes to shove and teams say, you know what, you're not going to run the football. Throw it yeah. 35 times and beat me. I don't think he can do that. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. And I think Philadelphia has the roster to say, you know what, You're not going to run it. Throw it on our secondary, which is outstanding. Go throw it 35 times against us and that pass rush and go beat us. And I don't think Brock Purdy can do that. I just think Buffalo. I I think the Niners roster is better overall. But I think Philadelphia beats them because of the quarterback position. That's just that's just what I believe. That's just what I believe. Um, A team that it, it pains me to say is and you brought them up is Dallas. I think Dallas is the wild card here because I think Dallas can be really, really good. But it's what you said. They're just not consistent enough. Just not consistent yeah. enough. And it's on Dak's shoulders. I mean, I look as much as some people hate this comparison. And by some people, I mean Cowboys fans. Uh, <laughs> Dak, is Dak Prescott really that much different than Kirk Cousins? Nope. <laughs> nope not at I all. mean, you know, just saying. He throws le- Kirk throws less interceptions, at least this year. Yep. Nope. And I, I've said that over and over and over again, that they are the same person. The difference is Dak is the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. If it were flip-flopped, they'd be saying the same thing about Kirk Cousins. Trust me. It, they, they're, they're the same guy. They're the same guy. Yep. So, flipping over to the AFC, things are a little bit tighter uh, with this injury that came out with Buffalo and the game being canceled, I mean, in my personal opinion, I just think they treat it as a tie and just move on. There's no way that they're going to reschedule or should reschedule the game or replay the game or or restart the game. They're just not going to do that um, or shouldn't do that. I shouldn't say they're not going to. I don't think they should. Having said that, uh, with where things are at, um, tell me what you think about the AFC, who can come out, who should come out, and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, the AFC is uh, it's a little bit more of the Wild West than, uh, you know, than the NFC. I, I mean, 
I know that people have been saying it all year long that the AFC is the stronger of the two conferences, and uh, I I would agree with that sentiment. I mean, I think there obviously are a few teams that can make make some noise. Notably, we we talked about the Eagles, um, but my team's still Buffalo, man. And and the only thing, and I hate to say it, but if we're just gonna be honest about this, Brian, and not to get into like the meta socio, you know, uh, part about all this. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing with, I mean, how's that going to affect the team? I mean, and I know that doesn't matter. I want to make that very clear that we're talking about somebody's life. But tonight we're talking about the football, Brian. So I'm just talking from a football perspective. I mean, I don't see how that doesn't kind of mess up the 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 mindset I, I, it would for me man i don't know how i would play if right. i saw one of my brothers on the field like basically almost die right in front of me you know right. that that's not a normal experience and i think it takes more than a week to get over something like that right. so my team for a long time has been the bills i still hope it's the bills because like the vikings they have yet to win a super bowl so that would be a, a fun storyline um but if it's not going to be the bills then i know it's cliche chiefs and Bengals, man uh you know maybe the surprise of the late season is the Bengals. remember remember when we were all talking about the Bengals and what the heck happened and this is going to be a waste of a season and here they are here so they are. uh but yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna say if somehow they're able to overcome all of this emotion which no one would blame them if it, if they can't buffalo then I would say 2A, 2B is probably Kansas City and Bengals. Gotcha. And I'm kind of the same way. Um, I, I I didn't think Buffalo was going to be able to beat either one of them before any of this happened. I think that mm-hmm. the Bengals had separated themselves that much. No, I shouldn't say separated themselves, but had taken that next step, you know, to be an upper echelon team. As much as that pains me to say as a Steelers fan, the Bengals had taken that step. And it wasn't the offense. It was their defense that had played so well the last seven games and got yeah. them to this point. You know, their offense you knew was going to be there. It's their defense that did it. I think it's going to be the Bengals. And I, I think the Bengals come out. I, I really do. I, I, it's going to be the Bengals and Chiefs. Uh, a lot of people like the Chargers because the Chargers are going to get healthy. I don't think the Chargers have enough defense. I mean, they cannot stop people. Uh, yeah. And in the playoffs, it's tough to win if you can't stop anybody. Plus, again, I I am not a Brandon Staley guy. I, I just think he plays too much analytical nerd football, and he gets in the way. And he's gonna get him beat. He got him beat and kicked out of the playoffs last year. He's gonna do. He's gonna do something again. While they got to the playoffs this year, he's gonna do something again and get him kicked out. Like go for it on fourth and nine from their six yard line or something, and they're gonna lose. It's just. I, I, I just don't trust him. I trust the roster, yeah. and that apparently it's getting healthy. I just don't trust him. But I think the Bengals, I think they are going to end up coming out of the AFC again. Although that's going to make my wife very unhappy, as she's a diehard <laughs> Chiefs fan. Um, I just, I, yeah, I know, I know. But I just think they're playing <laughs> at a, they're playing at another level. I, I think they've yeah. taken that that step, and they are playing at another level. Yeah. No, I I can't disagree with you. I can't disagree with you. Um, I think no matter who it is, it just in my personal opinion, I think it's an AFC winner this year. Uh, Should be a good Super Bowl unless we have something weird that happens. But I I think that this will be uh, whoever wins the Super Bowl. I would uh, if I was if I was betting my steggy dollars, it would be on an AFC AFC team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, man, I want to thank you again, man. I can't thank you enough for for joining us on the show. Uh, it does. It means absolutely a ton to me that you came on. Uh, appreciate it. We're absolutely going to do it again and just keep on doing this, man. Tell me and and what you're doing, your, your what your your podcast, all that good stuff. Tell everybody out there what you're doing and where we can find you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, of course, it's always a pleasure as well. Thank you for having me on. And absolutely, we're going to do it again. Uh, So, of course, anyone can find me on all the socials. Uh, Tony Stegman, that's my name. Uh, Otherwise, you can also find me on the Skull Purple podcast. We are on all of the socials. So Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, 
MySpace. No, we're not on MySpace. Uh, <laughs> YouTube. We've got all of our episodes on YouTube as well. Um, and then personally, uh, I do f- like to fashion myself as to make some interesting sports content on uh, TikTok. So you can find me at Steggy Stories on TikTok. So join me over there. Uh, we have a lot of fun. So, yeah, Brian, again, thank you so much. It's been a blast. No problem. And thank you again, everybody, for joining in. Remember to like, subscribe, leave tons of comments. Appreciate it, man. And we will get back to you guys and keep pumping these things out for you. Have a good one.